We'll reconvene uh, the Sacramento Public Library Authority uh, following closed session. Is there anything you need to report out, uh, Council? There's nothing to report. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, Linda, very quickly, um, call the roll, reestablish a quorum since we've had some change outs with alternates and uh, members and additions. Lori Hewer. Here. Alan Warren. Eric Guerra. Here. Sue Frost. Here. Angelique Ashby. Here. Susan Peters. Saul Hernandez. Here. Jay Chenier. Here. Donna Tolley. Here. Rick Jennings. Here. Daryl Wu. Still <laughs> After all these years. Thank you, Chair. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, we have a quorum. So with that, we do have um, one request to speak on matters not on the agenda. Um, Mary Ellen Shea, you want to come forward? And then we'll go right to our consent calendar since we have a quorum challenge here today. Good afternoon, Mary Ellen. Good afternoon. I'm Mary Ellen Shea. I'm the uh, interim president of the Sacramento Public Library Foundation. Uh, we are here today. <clears throat> to present the Sacramento Public Library Authority with contributions totaling $251,334. Because of our focus on children's literacy, we'd like to bring attention to donations that are being made for the purpose of increasing the reading skills and reading enjoyment of our youngest library users. $125,500 for the library summer reading program 2017, $12,753 for a yet-to-be-named project at Colonial Heights, $1,000 for books for the first five bookmobile project. The remaining $112,451 is based on donor direction and detailed in the chart at the end of this letter, which we'll provide for you. Because the foundation is deeply invested in continuing to grow in summer reading, we received a grant that will allow us to map current literacy resources in Sacramento, including summer reading at the library. No single program in Sacramento County touches as many kids as summer reading at the library, and understanding the impact of summer reading at the school level will be critical to future fundraising efforts. In addition to raising immediate support for the library, we are building an endowment to secure the participation of 30,000 kids annually in summer reading at the library for all time. We've raised approximately $250,000 this year to add to the initial $100,000 previously received. We are seeking $1 million in the silent portion of the campaign and another million when the campaign goes public. And finally, we have become completely independent and no longer require any in-kind support or rent, technology and ut utilities from the library itself. The library can now make the more than $36,000 of in-kind resources it had given to the foundation annually and redirect that back to the community. We are grateful to the entire library staff for their hard work and dedication to making the Sacramento Public Library the best that it can be. But we close today on a sad note. Later in your agenda, the library director will be speaking to you about the foundation's change in its bylaws and related matters. The foundation received a letter from the library's attorney on May 12th in which the foundation's commitment to raising funds for the library was clearly called into question. We were shocked and surprised by the library's reaction to what we consider to be a modernization of our bylaws to comply with current California law and improve our ability to raise funds for the library. These revisions are not intended to change the Foundation's long and successful relationship with the library. We have been, are now, and will continue to be raising money for the library, just like the 250000 we are promising you today. I have been involved with the Friends and the Foundation in a very active way since 1998. Reading is my religion, and the library is my church. To have my motives as foundation board member called into question this way after nearly 20, 20 years of service hurts a lot. All of our board members are disheartened by this very serious misunderstanding of our motives and hope that these matters can be cleared up soon. In the meantime, we will continue our fundraising efforts and we'll be back next year with another check for the library. Okay, thank you, Mary Ellen, for your comments, uh, and, and uh, sort of take those into account. We thank the uh, foundation for its contribution to 
uh, the library programs and, and services and uh, acknowledge, obviously, the comments that you make on behalf of the foundation and certainly your fellow board members. So I don't know if there's anything else at this point, but um, appreciate the comments and we'll see what <coughs> the future brings with relates to the item you pointed out. All right, um, again, with our deep thanks for the contribution. Um, I have no other comments then from members of the public. Anyone else wish to address the board at this time? All right, seeing none, then uh, we will go to the, um, well, <coughs> hold on the uh, presentations for a moment and go to, to the uh, consent calendar. And uh, we have items uh, 10 through 16. Is there any item on the consent calendar that anyone wishes to pull off the consent calendar or uh, speak to? If not, then a motion, um, okay. Okay, it's moved by Member Schneer, seconded by uh, Member Wu, uh, to approve the consent calendar. Anything you need to add, uh, Rivka? For t anything you want to add to any of the items? Okay. All right, then we can do this by a voice vote. Uh, Linda? This will voice vote. All those in okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Any recusals? If not, then uh, unanimous approval. Okay, we have one other action item, uh, and then we'll, we'll come back to any um, uh, presentations, and that is uh, why we still have quorum, uh, the proposed 17-18 uh, budget position control fine and fee structure. And we had some overview of this at the last meeting, so this is a final presentation. So, Sass, or Dummy. Oh, sure. We'll try to be as brief as possible. Um, as you know, we need a... a preliminary budget in place for uh, July 1 and what we have for you today is um, some mixed news, some good news, some mixed news and um, in the interest of keeping it brief we'll talk fast. I think the highlight, I'm going to move forward, uh, the highlight for those of you who are new on the board is where our funding comes from. As you know, we are, as a joint powers authority, we get funds from unincorporated areas of the county, the City of Sacramento General Fund, as well as two parcel taxes, and that accounts for uh, a little more than 95% of the library's uh, operating budget, the rest coming from fines, fees, investment earnings, and uh, Galleria rentals, and some direct donations that we see, uh, receive as, in the form of gifts, as well as grants. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead. So I think the biggest change that you'll see, uh, again, it, it's, it's not substantive, but it's the sunsetting of the old Measure X parcel tax, which we're collecting for the, la the final year in 2017-18. And um, so you'll see that going away, and then it will be replaced with the new uh, Measure X parcel tax which we can begin collecting funds on in January. So there's a little bit of an overlap there, uh, as well as some, some additional funds for Measure B. And the $371,756 in reduced revenue relates to uh, our mid-year budget adjustment. When we asked the board to approve additional funding for the Franklin Library in case uh, there was more damage that we hadn't figured out from the flood that occurred over the Christmas holiday. And uh, it's looking like we won't need those funds, so we reduced revenues accordingly. Johnny, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, no. Okay, good. we're doing okay. Um, we, want, we want you to look at the exhibits. Johnny will speak to uh, the city of Sacramento, uh, 400, or I'm sorry, the $48,758 and the other uh, arrows. Um, Johnny, finance manager. So I'm, I'm sitting at Denise's uh, chair and I just got a text from her to not spend all the money. Um, <laughs> so, um, so looking at the uh, schedule, um, if you take a look at the, uh, the first blue arrow on top, um, that's the city of Sacramento uh, estimated fund balance at June 30, 2018. Um, so as you see here, um, there is a structural deficit of uh, 48,758. Uh, so we're recommending to um, reduce the economic uncertainty by this amount in order to uh, uh, produce a balanced budget. Um, and then also on the, uh, the red arrow, 
that's the Measure X, um, which will be su sunset in June 30, 2017. Uh, so we're recommending to fully spend the remaining fund balances um, that we have within that fund in FY 1718. So, um, so the idea there is to uh, fully spend the restricted money first, and then the renewed Measure X um, within the green arrow uh, will be collecting uh, 5.4 million dollars. Um, so essentially we're going to keep all that money to um, start with the uh, next year's budget, um, which will be for FY18-19. Um, so overall fund balance, uh, we're looking at uh, 31.4 million dollars in fund balance, unreserved fund balance, uh, as we adopt the budget. Okay, and uh, in terms of exhibit two that's in front of you, you'll see that uh, the bulk of increases in the budget relate to salaries and benefits. We're in the middle of uh, uh, two contracts with our represented units, <coughs> uh, slight increase in services and supplies, and then you'll see that uh, we have virtually no capital pro or a great reduction in capital projects. We've been doing a lot of refreshes. Uh, that's slowing down for the next year as well as our deferred maintenance and then that reduction that I mentioned for the Franklin Library as well as I think it's our final payment for the Sacramento B archive the library will own that a hundred percent and the cost in this uh, new budget year is significantly less because it it's the costs relate to the decades purchased and we're into a cheap decade so that's why that uh, number is going down and then you can see um, the funds, uh, the lower half of the page, the various uh, funds in terms of also seeing the closeout of Measure X and the new Measure X coming in and other uh, minor adjustments. Um, so again, increased expenditures for salary and benefits, services and supplies, decreased expenditures for materials, books, equipment, and capital projects. We're using about 1.2 million in uh, fund reserves, and that includes uh, about 350,000 in the county for a proposed refresh, and also city funds in, in the amount of a million dollars. So the good news here is the city of Sacramento is making good on recognizing our structural deficit of the last few years, and they, uh, the city, discussed and heard uh, testimony Tuesday night at City Council to uh, provide the library with another 1.25 in million in general fund. We all need to raise our hands and say woo woo because that actually helps a lot. And over the next few years, we'll see additional uh, adjustments to the city's general fund contribution to try to make the library whole. We still have a little bit of an uphill battle, but uh, I think we're I think we're getting there. And um, Johnny, I just I don't want to talk too fast, but um, I'm trying to make sure because I know people have other um, meetings that they have to attend. Anything you want to add? Uh, no, that, that we're good there. Um, I, I just like to say we're, we're closing the gap on the um, structural, structural deficit with the city, um, and we're working with uh, city finances to um, resolve the uh, deficit right. going forward. And so, again, one of the things that we're trying to do, just again to keep us operating as a system and looking and, and operating as a as an entire system is shifting some expenditures from the city general fund to measure B, which is the most flexible of our parcel taxes, uh, and that includes staff, operating expenses, books and materials, and then uh, maintaining appropriate expenses within the old measure X that's about to sunset. It's a delicate dance. We're trying to do it all. Uh, and then we have uh, position control as part of your budget packet. We are uh, proposing the start of the year with 285 FTEs. That was approved at the April board meeting when we made a minor adjustment to position control, combining uh, a couple of positions into one and uh, add, allowing us to add one more youth services librarian out in the county. So we're at 285 FTEs and we'll happily answer any questions you have. We realize okay. we talked fast <laughs> and we'll be back in September with uh, when all the numbers true up with uh, a more specific budget for you. 
Okay, thanks, Rivka. Thanks, Tommy. Let me ask members of the board uh, any questions about specific budget items, about any of the things that were presented or included in the budget report. Okay, that's right. Um, Member Schneer and the member for Yeah, I, I just want to say we went through this at the budget committee. Um, I think you guys did a great job. We're on the right track here. Um, and so I would be happy to move this item. Okay, so moving seconded, uh, but I do have a, a comment by uh, Member Frost. I just wanted to tell Rivka that I was in Citrus Heights today and the Sylvan Library is really excited about the refresh that they're going to get. And uh, I also wanted to ask if sometime offline we could talk about Orangevale. I'm hearing that Orangevale has been underserved for a long time. And I wanted to, and I read the um, JPA agreement um, regarding the calculation of per capita and how, how we determine what we need in a community. I'd like to talk to you about that and determine are we underserved, how underserved, uh, and um, we've had some conversations about possibly repurposing another building and we're talking with our county real estate people to see if we can identify a property and if people, it seems like the sentiment is that we can settle for less than a new $10 million library. So I wanna try and move that direction and play that out if possible. And so, but first I wanna know how are we underserved? Can you, can, can you offline help me with that? We'll put together some information for you and arrange a meeting. And I want to say I'm thrilled with the idea of looking more broadly to a solution for the new library because it was just too, too expensive much. and there yeah. isn't there isn't the money. But if we can do a similar project to, to that which I think the residents of Rio Linda are thrilled with their library, if we can do something like that, we would be Right, just as thrilled, and it's a wonderful yeah. library. Yes. And and you know what I said to them: we, we you can wait ten or twenty years, or we can do this now. I mean, and they said, "Let's talk." So great, we're talking. All right, we'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, we do any other comments? If not, we had a motion and a second. And uh, if nothing further, any member of the public would like to comment on the uh, seventeen eighteen budget? All right, seeing none, then if there's nothing further, we can do this on a voice vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Any recusals? If not, motion approved. Okay. Um, with that, I'm going to have to excuse myself and turn it over to Vice Chair Schneer. Uh, complete the meeting. I've got to get to another meeting at 4 o'clock, so thanks. Okay. Uh, we'll move to item three then, presentations. I don't think your mic is on. Tony Thrasher of Will Dan is going to uh, take us briefly through the, the annual cost allocation plan. Go ahead. Oh, thank you, board. I'm Tony Thrasher. I'll kind of just start with going on. I'm part of Wildan Financial. Uh, Wildan has been providing services for uh, public entities for over 50 years uh, in a number of different areas. I'm part of the financial piece. Uh, my primary background is in uh, cost allocation plans, user fee studies, and utility rate studies. And uh, let's see here. One second. You can catch up a little bit. So. Our group, uh, my boss, our group manager is Chris Fisher, who's not here today. Oh. Hold on, I think we're having a little issue. Yeah. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I'm bored, so I'll skip over these a couple, okay? So Chris Fisher is, my, uh, is our group manager. I am Tony Thrasher, and we have a number of analysts that provide support for all the projects we work on and dive right into your cost allocation plan. What a cost allocation plan is, is a tool that is used to identify what the central costs are of an organization, allocate those costs to the operating functions of the organization. So those are kind of the outward facing. Uh, so it identifies what those support structures are and how they are provided within. Uh, the model that you have and the results you have are in OMB compliance uh, with uh, the Office of Management Budget with the super circular or omni circular and the cost principles uh, to CFR 200. What that really is, is it determines what a methodology you should use for cost allocation 
and it also restricts what types of costs you're allowed to allocate out. Uh, the primary ones uh, that come, commonly come into play are capital, debt, uh, general advertising costs that aren't specific t towards a function, as well as lobbying costs or litigation costs. So we make sure that those kind of costs are not being allocated out to the branches. Okay, and the model itself is a tool that kind of enacts that allocation and formulates exactly how that goes through the process and you can see within the report exactly each step of that and how those, those kind of numbers flow through. The allocation should represent how support is being provided to each branch based off of the primary functions that are being provided. So the primary, the call them building blocks, but it's really the, the major steps uh, that uh, the hurdles you get through for a cost allocation plan is identifying all central services and within those central services, what are the primary functions that they provide for? And based off of those primary functions, you identify data sets or distribution bases that you can use to allocate those costs to the branches to represent, uh, for lack of a better word, a burden they place upon those central services. And so using those distribution bases, we can then determine the allocations and use the model uh, to kind of formulate and you see the uh, results there before you that are based off of those allocations. So in general, the, this is, well, in general, but this is your uh, authority internal structure. Uh, you have your central functions that do the allocations to your, uh, your library branches. That is also the way that the support's being provided. So those central functions are providing support directly to those branches, and those branches provide uh, services out to the public. So the objectives in order to uh, ensure that we have a reasonable allocation, uh, we want to make sure that we have heavy staff involvement so we understand exactly what your organizational structure is and how support is provided. Uh, de uh, develop the defensible allocation uh, based off of the way that support is being provided. Uh, have a model that can show each step of the process so that there's kind of there's no hidden numbers. It's all there's it's fully transparent within there exactly why an allocation is being made. Uh, through the entire process, we're talking about different data sets that could be used to represent how support is being provided. Uh, you, the kind of deliverables at the end is a custom report that is unique to the authority, as well as uh, uh, the analysis and everything that kind of goes back to explain how that was formulated. And each year, we've done this, I believe, for five years now. And uh, so each year, we kind of look at exactly what's changed. And I'll have the next slide, I believe, that kind of goes through that. Uh, so to kick it off, we have initial discussion on it, kind of the overarching themes of what has changed over the past year so that we know when we look at the updated financial and expenditure data uh, to look out for certain things that we should be seeing. And so that when we have interviews with staff, uh, we can identify exactly what those changes are and how they affected the budgets of uh, the branches and the central services. We can identify any, um, anything that popped up that wasn't there before in previous years and resolve any issues that go through the, the allocation process so that when we actually enact the allocation through the model, it goes smoothly and we can identify exactly why it's done a certain, that way. And we can go back after the allocation is done to make sure that it looks reasonable and makes sense based off of those distribution bases that are chosen for each central function. The model uses what's called a double step down methodology and it's widely accepted uh, because it's it shows exactly how it's done. There's no hidden numbers behind it. Uh, there's nothing in it that is kind of there's we, there's no magic in it, right? Uh, so it uses two steps. The first is we do an allocation to all branches and central services using the distribution methodology chosen for each central service. So what that means is that there are costs that are being allocated from central service to central service. Those costs are still allocable. So what we do in the second step is we want to allocate those out using the exact same methodology before with the only changes we close out each central service one at a time so that all the costs then end up being in the in the uh, branches, right? So each, if you kind of think of it as a reverse pyramid, they all kind of close out one by one so that nothing remains within those, those central services. Here's an example of some of the allocation bases. All of them are fully detailed within the report. Uh, the percentages you see there, they are not round percentages because they are based off of the individual functions within those central services of how support's being provided. So th those functions in there flow into, if it's based off of number of personnel in a branch, it, it can be salaries and benefits, uh, number of hours, or FTEs based off of that support function that's being provided. 
Here's a summary of what the allocable costs are per central service. The unallowable amounts are those that were determined unallowable. Either they are, because we're looking at actuals here, it's because they represent allocations that you have, you had currently in your actuals, which is predominantly the case, so we don't want to double count those. Uh, but they also represent those unallowable amounts through the OMB compliance. And this extremely hard to see table, which is uh, bigger in your report, is the summary of allocations to the branches themselves in the respective funds. My very last table, this is the trend of the cap outcome. So this is the split between the different funds and how the allocations uh, kind of were split. So we started uh, handling your cost allocation plan in fiscal 1314. And so with the, uh, as kind of time moves on, you can see what changes there have been of the overall percentages. Okay. okay. Do we have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I think we're good. Thanks very much. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, right. staff. Let's move to summer reading. All right, it is that time again. Um, my name is Christy Hamm. I'm the Youth Services Manager here at Sacramento Public Library. Um, I'll be brief because I know we have lots of things to cover, but I did want to call out that it is summer reading time. So this is our, our bag this year. We have a new logo. Uh, this, our communications department has done a wonderful design, and this calls out all of our supporting agencies, the foundation and the friends of the library, who are such a great part of summer reading. And I'll stop hitting the microphone. Um, so I'm just going to go through really quickly, uh, starting June 1st and going through August 15th, open to all ages. The whole idea is to read for fun. Um, and we have lots of different ways to do that. So the theme this year is read by design. That really, it leaves things open, but we have lots of DIY, STEM programming, ways for people to design their own experiences at the library. Signups began May 15th. We're already almost at 5,000 signups as of just a minute before the meeting started. Uh, we're doing kickoffs at all of our branches the weekend of June. June 10th, so far 15 different locations doing kickoff events. And the whole idea is that reading five books over the summer is what's the magic number to maintain reading skills and, and learning during the summer months when school's not in session. So the way we do that, uh, there are paper sheets people can participate. They do reading, they read their books and log them, but they also do activities that helps incentivize using the library or experiencing different services um, and different ones for different ages. So for the pre-reader sheet, helps families learn together. For for school age kids, helps them brush up on skills and learn new things during the summer. And teens and adults just help them capitalize on learning more about the world or creating content, doing all kinds of things over the course of a fun summer. And of course, who doesn't love prizes? So just for signing up, you get a magic color changing pencil or a sticker. Um, but really the thing we do most is give away books to read and to keep. We think having books in the home is a huge predictor of future reading success. So if any kid that reads five books or more earns a book to keep of their choice over the course of the summer. And then adults get a snazzy book bag. And this year we are able to offer a book prize for adults thanks to the Friends of the Library. They get a certificate that they can redeem for a free book from the Book Den warehouse. So we thank the friends for that. Um, in addition, than we did last year. We made an extra prize for kids that went above and beyond and read 25 books. They get a snazzy summer reading medal. So that's the prize for this year. Um, and then we do some grand prize drawings as well. Every five books that someone reads, they get another entry into a, a prize drawing. So thank you to the Library Foundation for their support for all of these incentives, which help inspire reading all summer long. Um, in addition, during the summer, we do lunch at the library. So 10 different sites across the county are offering lunch at the library. Uh, this is a way to help families with food insecurity, anyone 18 or under, at any of our 10 branches. Uh, in addition, we have some funding from the California Library Association that will help us fund teen interns to help run the lunch sites, which is a really important part for they can uh, learn some work experience and, and help develop. So we just want to say thank you to the supporters. Obviously, the Sacramento Public Library Foundation gave such a generous donation today that's going to help put books in the hands of kids, as well as our friends of the library for all that they do. This year, we have a new media partnership with um, uh, CBS 13, so um, and in conjunction with Wells Fargo, so they're going to be doing a lot of support to help push the message of summer reading out across our, their service area. So we're very excited for that. And I want to thank you for your time, if anyone has any questions. Oh, one more thing. Um, 
District 8. Eight. Yes, District 8 is doing a special project where they are offering free swim passes to any of uh, the students who read five books or more in their service area. So I want to challenge any members of the authority board who would like to offer another kind of incentive for their constituents to talk to us and we can work out some special projects. I think there's some great ways to encourage reading across the county this summer. Great. Thank you for your time. Good. I actually thought you were going to challenge the members of the board to read five books over the oh. summer as well. Oh, that, that challenge is true, too. You can sign up right now, sacklabry.org. I, I, I think you should challenge it, and we should be signing up. So, um, Great. And then the other thing, I, I just personally want to thank you around the lunch piece. I think that's really important. I know the city doesn't do that, or we haven't in a number of years. Um, so that's incredibly important for uh, folks, probably particularly young people in a lot of our at-risk neighborhoods. So thank you for that. You can turn your mic on if you like. Yeah. That's okay. Um, sorry. We expect to, s to serve upwards of 10,000. We were at 8,500 last year, I think, right. or 86. So we think we'll get to 10,000 this year. That's a great point. It's a great Thank program. You. All right. Um, I don't see any comments here from either members of the board or the public. So we'll move on. We've already done closed session. Director's report, uh, Rivka, it's a very complete report in our packets. Is there anything you need to add? In the interest of time, I refer you to the written report. That's the answer that we were looking for. Let's go to the information items. Do you want to call those out? or Item 6.0, monthly financial report, March 2017. Item 7.0, quarterly investment performance for Q3, March 2017. Item 8.0, Sacramento Public Library Foundation change in bylaws and articles of incorporation. Item 9.0, formation of MOU for Friends of the Library. Okay. Any questions on any of that by members of the board? All right, seeing none, we'll move on. We've already done the consent calendar. We've done the action item. Reports, ideas, and questions from board members? Okay, seeing none, uh, that means we're adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.